Hi, welcome everyone. Um, today we're talking to Catherine Polak. She is the head stray animal care in Southeast Asia for the animal welfare organization Forpas. And we're talking about her about the ban in Cambodia in the province Siem Reap. Uh, they banned dog meat trade there for meat. Um, they announced it this week and your organization has been working hard towards this. Yeah, well, thanks a lot for having me and for covering this issue because it's something that we are so super excited about and it's just so uh, such a landmark move in such a, a tourist and iconic city uh, in Southeast Asia. So yeah, we have been engaging with the Siem Reap provincial government now for well over a year on this issue, but have been working on dog meat trade in Cambodia since 2018. So it's been um, quite the road to get here, but we're so excited, you know, for the great news and for all the dogs that will be saved. And could you describe uh, for for people listening or watching? Because um, you um, seem reap according to you was like a hot spot for dog meat, but what does that look like? So where do dogs come yeah. from? Yeah, I mean this was a really important you know part of the trade, and it's a national trade. I think one mistake people think is they think you know the dog meat trade. It's you know backyard. It's killing a dog or here or two. It's very small. But the reality is it is a massive industry um, with a massive supply chain, wholesalers, slaughterhouses, distributors, uh, and it spans, you know, hours and hours, you know, a whole country, these distribution routes. And so CM Reap played a very important role in that there's not so much consumption of dog meat in CM Reap. I mean, there is, there is some, but it really serves as the starting place on these dogs journey. So they have big warehousing um, we call holding areas that hold hundreds of dogs at a time. And they're loaded into minivans that have cages built into them. And then those dogs are trafficked to slaughterhouses outside of the capital city of Phnom Penh. So by really tackling the trade in this province, you're really, you know, attacking it head on at the source of where all these dogs are coming from. And is the dogs are stray animals, right? Because I once asked about China there. There's not a dog like how you have in Europe and the States, you have cows and pigs. They are like uh, factories basically. And but there's no dog yeah. breeding factory. No, I mean, so in Southeast Asia, the dogs, a lot of them are stray animals. So they're stolen from the streets, but many of them are pets. A really high percentage in some places are actually stolen pets. So they're stolen from people's yards or even stolen from, you know, when they're being walked outside or if they're let outside. You know, it's a huge issue um, and it's causing a lot of societal unrest because pet owners are are simply tired like they're sick and tired of having their animals stolen yeah, uh, and then trying to to buy them back from these markets it's just it's horrendous and how did it how did it start in cambodia like how did the dog meat trade start why do people eat dogs yeah, well, um, it's, it actually, I mean, the good news is that in Cambodia, this is not Khmer culture, dog meat consumption. And they are very quick uh, to point the finger at Vietnam to them, mm -hmm. you know, because of, of the longstanding history and the, you know, the very tumultuous history that Cambodia has with, with the, the war, you know, several decades ago. It wasn't that long ago. Um, and that there was Vietnamese occupation of Cambodia. And so many are very quick to point to that, you know, that period of occupation uh, that, you know, Vietnamese had brought in their kind of cultural habits of eating dog meat. The vast number of Khmer people do not eat dog meat, do not support dog meat. Oh, and so this ban, it really just makes sense. Like it's very reflective of, of local Khmer sentiment, you know, about this trade. And is that, is that also why the government decided it? Because it's also a big, um, they also said a lot of tourists eat the meat. So that's why the restaurants started having, uh, like offering meats. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, there maybe is a, a bit of that. You know, certainly a lot of the tourism in Cambodia is coming from China. It's coming from South Korea far more than it is coming from Europe or, or you know, the U.S., etc. Um, so there is some of that, I think. We do see, though, within our investigations that there is quite a lot of local consumption. When you look at, you know, the restaurants, uh, there is some local consumption. There are some, you know, Korean tourists, I'm sure, that are partaking in, in dog meat. I don't know that that's the majority, right, of the consumption, but but that's fine. You know, whatever, however they want to justify it is fine with us. And then I saw footage that you covered where a dog was, um, I'm not going to show it because it's too graphic, I think, but a dog was hanging by a tree, like they were hanging the dog. But is that a common practice to, to slaughter dogs or to kill dogs there? Or 
So the, <gasps> the most common is actually drowning. So we actually see the mass drowning of these dogs in these really custom designed like drowning pits. I mean, it's it's absolutely horrendous. Uh, it's it's I've ne I haven't seen the dog meat trade like that uh, anywhere else in Southeast Asia. And they do it because it's e it's efficient, right? They can kill large numbers of dogs, but it's just absolutely it's horrendous. Um, but in Siem Reap, the, the footage that you're referring to, that is actually um, a way that they hang dogs to kill them right outside the gates of Angkor Wat. So quite shocking. Yeah, that is, and the drowning, I haven't heard that. I haven't heard it in other countries neither. That's yeah, typical, so, typically in Cambodia. Yeah, it is. It's very specific to Cambodia. And I mean, really the reason that they do it again, because they can kill animals in mass. Um, and it's also you know, it's least risky or, or um, effort intensive for those that are killing the dogs, right? They just put the dogs in big cages and drop them into these pits. Yeah. Okay. That, that was new to me. That is a horrific way of uh, like the killing. I mean, it's, yeah. it's all horrific. I mean, either way it's. Um, yeah. It. And do you see, do you see, um, so this is one province who started this. Do you see the rest of Cambodia also adopting this ban? Yeah, so I mean, we've been working really specifically in Siem Reap again because it is so historic, right? It's so iconic, mm -hmm. um, and tourism is so so important. But we are also working on a national level with um, the government agency that oversees slaughterhouse regulation, and they've made very clear this is illegal, right? Because according to the animal health law in Cambodia, dogs are not, you know, a livestock species. Very similar to the advancement we saw in China recently, where you know dogs are not on the list. But these slaughterhouses are illegal. So Four Paws is actually in the process of signing an MOU at a national level so that we can really take action and close all of these slaughterhouses down, you know, across the country. Um, so we are really positive and excited that we think, okay, CM Reap is the first to really take public action, but other cities are going to be next. It's just a matter of time. Okay. And how are they going to enforce this? Because did, I, did you just say it's illegal in Cambodia to... Right. So, so there's a there's a legal gray zone, right, where, yeah. um, you know, these these slaughterhouses, they're they're unlicensed, unregistered. Mm -hmm. But is anyone enforcing that? No, at the moment, they're not. Um, and so that's really where the NGO partnership with the government, where we are really looking to provide support, you know, for the Cambodian government, both at a provincial and a national level. So our plan right now is we are working with one district governor in particular in CM Reap to roll out a plan to actually enforce this. So this was the big announcement. This is the warning, essentially. This is the warning to traders that your activity is no longer going to be tolerated. We're going to take action. And we are currently looking at what that action will look like and how we kind of plan that. Um, and so that will be in the weeks to come. Okay, yeah, because like I can also imagine, uh, I think someone also wrote it somewhere but, uh, as a comment, but I can also imagine if you're, so if this is, your job, which is of course yep. like a cruel job you have, but then a lot of people, if you ban this, so it's a whole industry, yep. like you said, like it would be the same in Europe if you were to ban um, cow meat or pig meat, there a lot of people would yeah. do without work. Is that, yep. does the government think about it? Like how, like China is also thinking about those things. How are we gonna ban things, but then what do we offer people? Yeah, so no, I'm, yeah, they're definitely, it's a good point. They're definitely thinking about it. And it's something that, you know, we're thinking about as well because the dog meat trade, it's as much of a people problem as it is an animal problem, right? People are in it because it's a way that they can make a living. And you can understand that particularly in a country that is fraught with corruption and not a lot of social opportunity, right? For economic yeah. advancement. And so for pause, we actually shut down um, a large scale slaughterhouse in October of last year by providing livelihood conversion for that person. So we actually converted a dog slaughterhouse that was killing 2000 dogs a year into a rice and vegetable cultivation operation. And we're actually looking to do the same in about four weeks. We actually have a conversion coming up as well because we have to be able to help the local people so that we can help the dogs. How we roll that out on a larger scale, I think is it's a bit to be determined because ultimately, you know, we are in the job of saving animals, right? That is yeah. our expertise. And yeah. it's the government's job to write to help the people. But we recognize that we play a role in helping to support their end to the trade. So we'll have to see, um, but it's certainly something that is not being forgotten about. No, yeah, but that is, I think that is key also, like for from all the um, interviews we do also in, you help people, yeah, but uh, you help the, the animals, of course, but there's a there's the people part, it's people's right. living kind of, yeah. Right, and that's exactly it. Do you, um, do you fear it's gonna go, um, if it's actually banned and it's enforced, that it will be an illegal, like, a place where people can see it, that it will still continue like that? 
I mean, I think with any trade, there's always a possibility that you're going to push it underground, right? And yeah. so there's some inevitability. Like we can do what we can, um, but we can't be everywhere, at, you know, all the time. I think by making a real strong stand, which the government has done, I mean, it is all over social media, the TV, the radio. I mean, it's incredible. My phone has been going crazy, which is great, right? And mm -hmm. it's very positive. And there's already that social pressure in Cambodia. I think this is what's really great is that there's already a social stigma about it um, that, you know, less than 10 percent of people are even eating dog meat, you know, once a month, according to some market research we've done. It's not a mainstream activity. And, and the one thing we did some market research focus groups and we asked people, we asked consumers, you know, what would make you stop? eating dog meat is it your favorite celebrity you know came out and asked yeah. you not to or all these things and you not there wasn't a lot that would that would sway them but what would sway them is if they thought they were going to get in trouble if they thought that the government you know was really going to crack down and so if we can support the government to really make you know to really make it that enforcement will happen then i think um i think you know the dominoes will fall and we'll see you know definitely less and less consumption and so you see actually like, I mean, China is changing now. Cambodia has announced this. Do you see change coming in Asia for when it comes to dogs? We hope so. Yeah. I mean, it's been really exciting. I've been working on these campaigns for many years in, in Vietnam and in Indonesia and Cambodia. Uh, and so we are seeing definitely momentum. Uh, and I think also, you know, the, the COVID-19 crisis has really brought to light the dangers that these live animal trades and markets pose. Uh, and so, and certainly, you know, the dog meat trade is fraught with infectious disease, with rabies in particular, like people are dying from this trade. Yeah. So I'm really, you know, positive that uh, this will cause some regional momentum in other countries as well. And it's our job also to help push that right now, CM Reap, they took a stand. This is a great case study. Let's now put some pressure on some other cities to replicate this success. Yeah. Yes, I hope so. Uh, thank you so much for your time and thank you for everything you do for animals there. Thank you very much for having me. I appreciate it. And thanks everyone for watching.